Hey guys, Nick Showman from Showtime Strength and Performance. What we're going to talk about is considerations that you should think about um, prior to starting XYZ program, whether it's a conjugate method, a linear method like 531, bigger, faster, stronger, any type of program that you're going to begin, even um, especially if it's with a trainer or something that they should take into consideration. There's a lot that goes into a program when it's actually thought out. So what you need to do is, um, I always tell people that there's A and Z. A is where you currently are, that's with your fitness levels. If you're a competitive power lifter, um, that's pretty easy because where you currently are, if you've competed before, is the numbers you did in the last meet. So that's where you currently are. Z is where you want to finish. Um, again, if you're a competitive lifter, that's easy because Z is going to be your next competition. So what you need to figure out is how this new program that you're getting on is how the in-between is going to help you get from A to Z. So like I said, A also will have other um, factors in it, such as your current fitness level, um, your current health, your current nutrition, your current state of mind. Sometimes it's actually better for people if they're not um, mentally ready to begin a program, they could do more damage by beginning a program and forcing it. It doesn't always make sense to jump on a new program. All right, so you need to be honest with yourself and say, am I, am I mentally and physically prepared to take on a new program or a new training method, whatever it might be? Sometimes people force it and they're just gonna end up spinning their wheels, all right? And that's where um, sometimes the stuff on the internet can get tricky because people aren't taking those things into consideration and people that are doing the online programming aren't taking into consideration um, potential clients' current work capacity levels, their current strength levels. If a client that you could work with is only used to doing one to two sets of um, accessory work each workout and then you have them do 20 to 30 sets of accessories they're gonna overtrain if they can even get through it and that's gonna be your hindering progress all right so you need to be real and see where they're at before th that goes on and that's why anybody that um, ask about online programming or even that comes into Showtime if they're they've trained with somebody or if they've done their own programming I just need to see a sample one week is fine you can get an idea from one week um, but you need to see what they're used to what their expectations are all right another thing speaking of that they need to talk about before they start on a program before you start on a program what are your expectations so what do you hope to gain from working with XYZ coach or trainer, whatever. If the expectations aren't laid out, then you can't assume anything about what the athlete's goals are. And that's where it becomes a big gray area. Um, as a trainer, as a coach, something I learned is if somebody was coming into Showtime, I just assumed that they wanted to get stronger, they wanted to get faster. That might not be the case. All right, some people want to feel better. And I think personally, strength goes a long way in that department of feeling better, but for some people, it might not. So you need to find out what their expectations are and then their thought process of how to get those um, expectations from the program, all right? Again, what you might have to do, because if your expectations um, you guys have the same expectations, but you might want to take two road, two different paths to get there. You might have to compromise and do a give and take. All right, um, easy example is a lot of high school, college guys, they love to do upper body, arms, shoulders. All right, what we've done is we have commitments that we put on the board. They are more than welcome to do those commitments uh, prior or post workout it's an easy compromise because they're still going to do their whole workout and they're still going to get to do what they want. So they're doing what the coach wants and they're doing what they want. So it's fulfilling both needs to lead to the same goal. And that's how you create buy-in with your athletes that you're programming for. Um, some of our athletes really like the accommodating resistance. So we make sure to program that in. 
um, even if it might not be per se what they need at the time, but if, they, that, if that's what they think is gonna help them get there, then I'm gonna make sure we program that in to help create buy-in for those athletes. Because if the athletes aren't bought in, they're not gonna gain in progress, all right? But again, that's in, once you're into the program. Another thing you need to think about with a um, program, a workout plan, whatever, before starting is um, the person who's creating the plan, what's their background, and have they produced what your goals are for others, all right? If, <laughs> one thing at Westside that Lou always says, you can't ask somebody weak to get you strong. It's not gonna work, it never has and never will. Like, all right, so another thing we need to do, um, you know, prior to a program is we need to look at what is gonna be in the program, what needs done. All right, that's very important. Um, if you're getting ready for a powerlift to meet a strongman contest, these things are all different. So how we go about them and how we fill our time in that program needs to be taken seriously. All right, if you are a beginner, it doesn't matter as much because a lot of it, a lot of any program is gonna work for you. But the higher level you get, you need you need to have a better grasp of what's you know what is going to work. It's one thing to take somebody from a 200 pound squat to a 300 pound squat. It's another thing to take somebody from a 700 pound squat to an 800 pound squat. Big differences, and you need to narrow it in. All right, when you're a beginner, your range of things that will work, or you know anything in this area is going to work. But as you get more advanced, the things that are going to work, you know, you need to rein it in and figure that out. And that's where the tough part comes in. So once you figure out what needs done, you know, obviously now you're into the, your program. Now you need to figure out how you're going to evaluate what you're doing, all right? You need to figure out a way, and that's for each program, each goal, you know, that's dependent on the coach, the athlete, and so on. But how are you going to evaluate? Are you just going to go full 12 weeks and say, you know what, that's it. It worked or it didn't work. I fucked up. I would rather every, I'd say four to eight weeks, take a day, evaluate whatever that is. Um, that's something you need to talk about with you, your coach, or whoever is doing the program. If it's not a coach that you interact with, they need to lay out how is this going to be evaluated throughout the training. Um, obviously with weight loss, you can tell if it's working or not by the scale. If your scale is getting better, if you're taking progress pictures and so forth, then it's working. Um, also another way you can evaluate it is just keeping a daily log. Um, how are you sleeping? How are you, um, eating? How do you feel mentally? Those things will go a long way. That's something uh, my buddy, Dr. Dan Fossman had me do uh, when we were trying to figure out some things with my blood work. And blood work's another thing that you can use to evaluate if nutrition and so forth is your goal. It will go a lot further than um, just making these little notes. Take five minutes out of your day. Just write how, I f how do you feel? Um, things you accomplished today, things you ate today, how much water you drink, um, any supplement changes, those all need to be noted. And again, those, those things that you're evaluating will help. But you need to be able to evaluate. And then after you evaluate, you need to adjust. So how do you adjust the program if it's working? How do you adjust the program even more so if it's not working? And also, even if the program's not working, that doesn't mean, fuck, we need to stop. That means... Um, you know, you don't want 80 something. You just simply make minor changes or tweaks, and that's then you build off that. If you spend eight weeks, you test, and it doesn't work, and you just throw out the whole fucking program, then you just wasted eight weeks. You didn't build anything. You didn't learn anything. Um, Dan John said it best: everything works for a while, nothing works forever. So you need to be aware of that also. Um, you know, if I went and I did a CrossFit workout right now, 
the first four weeks would be brutal, but I would make progress towards those CrossFit goals of mine um, because I don't do that currently. But would I keep getting stronger if I was only training CrossFit for a longer period of time? Uh, I don't know. And I'm not knocking on CrossFit, I'm just using that as an example, whether it's bodybuilding, whatever. The, um, but you need to adjust your program like I said, if it's working awesome, you might not need to adjust anything, and then you can continue a 12-week meat prep or whatever it might be. Um, and then after you adjust, make the adjustments, you need to retest. All right, and that's all these things are what's wonderful about um, training at Westside Barbell, training with the guys from Westside Barbell, using any conjugate method. All right, we know, let's say if I know... Um, for me personally, if my floor press goes up, I know my raw bench is going up. If my raw bench is going up, I know my shirted bench is going up. So these are indicators, and when we say, you know, evaluate exercises, evaluate um, the program, if these things are going up, these, I'd say, try to find 10 exercises. They, if they're going up, you're probably good. If they're going down, that means something's off and you need to figure out where the fuck it is. That could just be, you know, if you're deadlifts going down, have you been doing enough volume in your hamstring accessories? All right, so these are just things that I think people need to think about prior to beginning a program that I don't think enough people do. There's a million programs out now. There's some good, there's some bad. I'm not judging which programs are good or bad. I'm just saying... I think people need to evaluate themselves personally before they jump on any program. And I think the more people are able to do that, the more success they're going to have once they start whatever program it is. If you have any more questions about this, feel free to email me, um, nick at showtimestrength.com. You can find me on Instagram, all that. Any questions, leave in the comments below.